I want to get this out, then I can crawl inside and get up here and work. It's real hard stretching in to get this. Four is the difference between the pressure you put in the cylinder, 80, and what the cylinder will hold. In this case, 44, which is not. It was a very VFR day and I had to be there earlier but instead I arrived on a very perfect Pakistani time. Which exactly means half an hour later. The restoration is taking place at the EAA 650 chapter in Bloomington, Indiana. As I arrived, the engine was being tested for compression tests and that's where I started asking noob questions. Trying to move, try to keep it at the top. I got it. All right, John, what do you got? Well, it's definitely coming out of the exhaust. 80 over 44. 44? What does that mean, 80 over 44? We're putting uh, pressure in the cylinder, air pressure in the cylinder, you know, when it's at top yeah. dead center and the compression. I'm trying to see where the air pressure leaks out. It leaks out through the valve and the exhaust, or it leaks out through the crankcase and through the crankcase breather. So if it uh, comes out of the breather, is it a good thing? No, not necessarily. <laughs> okay. It's not going to come out any place. Yeah, any place okay. What you're looking for is a differential between the pressure you put in the cylinder, 80, and what the cylinder will hold. In this case, 44, which is not very good. What should be the optimum? 80 over 78 is pretty, pretty ideal. The bill, what they call a dog, and when they cha sent you to different hangers, then you could pull your toolbox. And this just sets right. Right on top, <laughs> underneath there's where all my sheet metal tools went, and then this set on top. And you can see where it's, you know, but my granddaughter, she's 17 now. And the other thing, I want to cut it out. I'd like to get rid of this and get a uh, filtered air box. Uh, this box here. Yeah, the aircraft had suffered a prop strike and the engine had to be inspected for any internal damages. And therefore, while the engine was being pulled out of the aircraft, I played the vital role of holding the light. What you're going to do next is, you see this right here? Yep. going to get it loose with these plugs. Let me uh, see those. Okay, I've got that light. Right? Oh, I see it. Okay. Are still the originals from 1946? Yeah, 1946 when the airplane was built. I think that's the last time these bolts were put on. <laughs> they are not. Uh, they're all rusted on real bad. At least you got one out. <laughs> How many are remaining? Oh, we got a whole lot more to go. I got to try to figure out how to get this thing out. I want to get this out, then I can crawl inside and get up here and work. It's real hard stretching in to get this, but I want to get this damn thing out. The interior of the aircraft had seen the days needed to be replaced, but the nuts and bolts holding it all together for decades wouldn't lose that easily. 
have a guy like the rest of them, right? Yeah. So you, if you would. Well, I have a crawl underneath it, but what are they hooked to on the bottom? They just come around. They just come around and yes, back up. It's all back up. It's just a loop. Yeah, it's just a. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you think there'd be kind of some yeah, kind of uh, there's a bar under there that goes across. Yeah. Wouldn't, you, wouldn't you think there'd be some kind of slick on that, that bar to that they're sliding on? Well, you know what I'm saying? Well, the cable they're just, is they're there. Just stretch around that bottom that bar. I mean, the stretch is really kind of length. What do you think those go to? Uh, I mean, I wouldn't think there'd be that much slack in a cable, but maybe there is somewhere. Uh, have to follow it forward and see what it looks like. I guess. That's the that's the failsafe cable. If the bungees break, that's what keeps you from. Oh yes, yeah, well, that's it. Oh okay, that's it. That's what that is. Somebody broke it one time, and they decided to start putting safety cable. <laughs> I took a like only 235 off the mountain at A and P school. I set it up on the bench by myself, and the instructor. Came in the next day and said, Richard says, how did you move that motor? I said, well, it's kind There's of There's no way to crane it. Oh, well, you know, well, <laughs> 235. And he looked at me like, you're going to be some kind of crazy man. We were a lot younger. Okay. You want to take that, that castle going off? You know, a, a 235 is probably the most expensive like only there is to rebuild. Because yeah. there's not many of them. I just do. Here. All right, ready? Yep. Work. There you go. You got it left up, go out and same right there. All right. Here we go. All right. John, I can get it here this side. You got it? Yeah, I got it. You got it? Okay. We got it. Come on. I got a lot going in. I know. I know. I know. You're not supposed to talk about that now. And eventually, right. the engine was pulled out and sent to Mike's workshop for tear down and inspection. See, I foresee a problem. That's all right. <laughs> what problem is that? You're gonna have to strap it around. Oh, I think it'll be okay. Lift up one. Now, While the engine was being torn apart, Mike gave me an important job to fulfill, which was cleaning the engine mount. Now, put your hands through there. <laughs> There's no, usually no spiders here. <laughs> okay. Got another one. And then pick this up. You can't, can't film and... Yeah. 